Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to Mel Did It Herself. Today we're doing another furniture flip and today it's on a high chair, which is something I've never done before. So this is a vintage slash antique. I'm not 100% sure how old it is. Um, solid wood high chair. One of my subscribers on, or I guess my followers on Instagram reached out to me and she had it and didn't have any space anymore. So I gladly took it off her hands. So thank you so much, Jen. And if you guys aren't already following me on Instagram, I highly encourage you to head on over and check it out. It's the same name, Mel did it herself. So you can see here um, the contraption that holds on the high chair serving tray is um, pretty old and um, it actually is missing one spring, which you'll see after, but here's a good look at what we're starting with. So as always, I'm gonna start off with TSP, which is a heavy duty degreaser and just a shop rag and giving that a thorough spritz and then wiping it down just to get any of the you know, oil, grease, grime from over the years off of it um, and being sure to like get into those little nooks and crannies on all those spindles just because gunk can accumulate and even if you can't see it, there's always way more than you thought. So this is a really important step at the beginning of any project that you're doing to make sure that you're cleaning it off and um, then going through with um, just some water on a rag just to wipe off any of the leftover residue. Then just a little safety tip, make sure when you're doing this step, unless you're using a natural cleaner that you are wearing gloves of some sort. I have plastic gloves on here um, just to protect my skin because certain products can be corrosive to the skin. I always like to show this because I think it's good to see. This is how much gunk came off of that chair and it didn't look dirty at all or feel like grimy to the touch. So always important to do. Because there's a little bit of a glossy finish on this piece and it is so old, I wanted to bring it down to the kind of like raw or wood so that the um, paint that I'm gonna use would adhere better because I wasn't gonna use a primer too. So this is just a good safety net um, to make sure that everything is going to stick well. So I'm using, um, I think it was 120 grit sandpaper and just going over all of the surfaces, including the spindles and the legs, um, just getting all that kind of glossy shine off. And then I went through with a rag and got rid of all of the dust particles as well. So you can see everything is just roughed up a little bit. And then the only kind of, um, damage quote unquote on this piece was that one of these armrests was a little bit wobbly you can see here compared to the other one it um, was just a little bit looser so i did go through off camera and just put some gorilla glue into the base of those spindles there because they could move up a bit and that perfectly solved that problem but luckily that was the only thing that i had to repair on this piece which is always a plus Finally, the best part, painting. So I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Midnight Blue, and it's just a deep, beautiful navy color. Um, Fusion is an all-in-one paint, so it does have a built-in top coat. Um, you can choose to do a top coat on top of that, but I just did about three coats of this, and it was good to go. The hardware that was attached to the high chair to attach the tray um, was just a little bit corroded and had been worn so I'm just using some barkeeper's friend and some uh, steel wool with a fine uh, grit or grain so that there's no scratches being put into it and just shine them up a bit and I was really pleased with how they came out actually um, you can see there's not a lot of rust or corrosion on it anymore which is perfect and anything that's on there is just um, like aesthetic it's not you can't feel it 
and off camera after this I went and gave it a coat of spray paint in gold. In the bright daylight the following day I just flipped it over and made sure there weren't any spots underneath that I had missed which there were because I was doing it in crappy lighting so make sure you're doing that and then I just opted to give a quick quote to the base like the underneath of the base. So once that hardware that was spray painted gold was done, I just reattached it to the high chair. And this is actually it upside down. I went back and redid it after, but there you have it. Now for the tray, I just took all the hardware off, gave it a quick clean and then spray painted it gold as well. And for the tray, I knew I wanted to see what that wood grain looked like. So I sanded it all down using 120 grit sandpaper. It was beautiful. I wanted to keep that exposed. The reason I painted the actual high chair itself is it had a lot of wear and tear. So um, I thought it would look better painted, but I definitely wanted to keep this exposed. And to do that, I'm going to use the General Finishes High Performance Water-Based Top Coat. And I know I'll get a comment about this, so I want to clear the air um, all of the top coats that are made past 1970 or so are toxic, sorry, non-toxic <laughs> once they are properly set up and they dry. Um, so this will be okay for any young ones. If their food is directly on it, it's okay. I would have liked to be able to use like a natural oil, but that requires a lot more maintenance. So if I'm gonna be selling it, I didn't wanna limit my uh, customer in that way. And to put the top coat on, I'm going to be trying my new zebra brush out. This is the fan brush, and I've seen a lot of other furniture refinishers rave about it for top coats. So I'm super excited to give that a go um, for a delayed uh, birthday present. My partner ordered me a bunch of zebra brushes, and I'm so excited to use them all. Here they are here, but um, one of my local fusion retailers um, was able to order them in because it's kind of hard to get them in Canada um, without a bunch of like shipping and customs fees so anyways super pumped about that I'll let you guys know how I like them we're gonna go ahead and ignore the patched wall behind me here and just look at how nicely that top coat goes on I love this brush for it um, it's so like silky smooth and it has a very wide um, mouth, but sorry, the bristles, I guess. <laughs> very wide, but not super dense. So it doesn't hold too much product. Um, so you don't get that gloopiness on the edges so much, um, but it just is just smooth as butter. I love it. The gloopiness I referred to is just like how there might be a little bit on the edges that kind of went over like you can see here so I always make sure to go around on the sides um, of the pieces just to make sure there's no like product that's overhanging I guess because um, it can be sanded down after the fact but if you can catch it before it dries it really helps um, in the overall finished product so just a little tip there because I have made that mistake in the past of not being able to see all the edges of it as I'm refinishing or putting a top coat or the paint on and then after it dries I notice it and I'm like oh that sucks <laughs> So the key to getting a really silky smooth finish is to sand in between your top coat layers. So after I waited the amount of time, um, depending on whatever product you're using, it'll be different dry times. 
but I waited until it was fully dry and then I'm going through and just very lightly sanding. Um, this is 400 grit sandpaper, but I would say anything higher than about 200 grit. Go through and lightly sand it. You'll see that it'll change the color a little bit because it will be a fine dust that it's bringing up. But you can go through with either a tack cloth or, um, you know, just a very lightly dampened cloth. Wipe away that dust and then do your next layer. This will remove any brush strokes that might be in the top coat layer and any sort of just like bumps and stuff. It just makes it really silky smooth. In the past, I have neglected to do this and just did top coat, top coat, top coat. Um, and you really can feel the difference. And especially since this is gonna be for kids, I wanted it to not only be very durable and well sealed, which is why I did more than the recommended amounts of coats, but I also didn't want there to be any, you know, roughness or sharp edges, especially because I don't wanna hurt the little kitty's hands. So you can see once it dries um, from being like wiped off with the damp cloth, it goes back to being closer to the color it was prior to sanding, but then you just put another coat on there and you'll see at the end that you can really tell that it's nice and like buttery smooth. Um, and so I did this on the top, the sides and the bottom of the tray, just to make sure that not only the wood is well preserved, but that it is gonna be very durable for whoever chooses to buy this piece. I really should say too, I'm going back over spots on this more than I should be, especially this product recommends not doing that. Um, lots of top coats do. So just word to the rise, look at the directions on whatever top coat you use and go by that if you're gonna be doing a project like this. Um, I was just feeling a little perfectionisty, but it really, um, you're supposed to just put it on and like leave it and let it dry and not go back over spots. So just so you know. So here you have the piece all together. I'm super, super stoked with the color of the wood grain and how it turned out, um, you know, compared to this navy. I think it looks really stunning and I'm happy that I was able to maintain that part of the piece because, you know, it does hurt my heart to put paint over some of these wooden pieces that have so much, you know, history behind them. But sometimes I think it really does help elevate the piece um, and I do try and Keep whatever wood I can so I'm really happy that I was able to keep this wood tray as is um, for someone to you know take this on and hopefully keep it in their family for years to come so I hope you guys like this video um, and if you are interested I have other furniture flips on this channel um, here's some photos that will be on my Instagram, which is Mel did it herself. I would love if you would like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for being here and feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought of it. Thanks so much. Bye.